Okay, Dan at Sugar Tree Run here again. Today I want to cover the basics of reverse osmosis, or sometimes referred to simply as an RO system. So uh, this is a homemade RO that actually slides onto our evaporator, and uh, it's just mounted to a piece of piece of wood just for ease of carrying it around all as a uh, system, but you can do this either uh, on, a, on a piece of plywood or mount it permanently someplace or even keep these maybe uh, components slid into something as simple as a, uh, as a pail. So on the left over here we've got a booster pump. This pump uh, is an Aquatec pump. It's in the, the 8800 series and it's got a pretty good flow rate and can operate up over 100 psi which is perfect for an RO system. Then we've got a, uh, a simple filter system here and this one has a 5 micron filter inside and we'll tighten this up. Uh, and then that goes through a 400 gallon per day RO canister with an RO membrane inside. That RO membrane you want to um, to rinse after each use, uh, do a back flush on the system and I can go over that here later. Uh, and then we've got a, a pressure gauge here to kind of monitor your pressure. You, again, you probably want to be operating right around 100 PSI. And a needle valve at the outlet. So when it goes through the RO, it's actually separating out pure water from concentrate, or uh, the sap that still has sugar in it. And that, that sugar, you got a pressure switch here to shut this off if it goes below pressure or above. But the needle valve controls the, the pressure on the overall system, and it keeps it so you can get about 50% concentrate and 50% water being rejected out of the RO. Okay, and that, R, that water that gets rejected is referred to commonly as permeate. Okay, so this cuts down on your boiling time significantly and your fuel use by about 50% if you up your sugar content uh, or you double it by cutting half the water out initially. Okay, we've got our RO set up on our evaporator. It's just mounted here for ease. Uh, keeps all the components in a vertical orientation. Uh, now what we're going to do today is kind of cover uh, use, of, use of this machine. We're going to cover the inlet and the exit both from a permeate and concentrate standpoint and the adjustments of the needle valve to make sure your flow outputs are balanced between the two. This area on the evaporator is also where we stage a steam pan to, to draw off from our main boiling pan as well. And then we can use that steam pan, it's all kind of sized appropriately when we built this evaporator to do finish boiling. So we've got some syrup up here that's finishing uh, while we're gonna start concentrating sap from today. And then we're gonna put that in the main, the main evaporator pan um, and boil that down in small batches into our finishing pan and kind of repeat the process. So this is the inlet hose. We've got it weighted uh, at the bottom. We're just gonna drop that into our, our gathering tank here. Uh, and make sure that we've got um, good suction going in. Okay, so we've dropped our inlet hose into our gathering tank. Again, we probably got about 22 gallons of sap in here, and you can see that hose down at the bottom of the tank. Okay, and now let's talk about the startup of the RO. We want to take the concentrate line out, which is off the needle valve and also route that back into our main tank, at least for starting purposes. Exit back into our main gathering tank, and we're gonna start with that just to get sap flowing through the system. And then once we adjust the needle valve and start removing permeate, we're actually gonna discharge this into a five gallon bucket so that we can keep track of how many gallons of sap we've concentrated, how many gallons of permeate we've collected, and have everything staged for our evaporation process. And the, the permeate line we've just got going into a five gallon bucket now. And again, when we start concentrating, we're gonna move the concentrate line to a five gallon bucket as well. And the goal is to, to reject five gallons of water and collect five gallons of sap. So we've got a 50-50 um, split, which has doubled the sugar concentrate of our sap before boiling. Now I'm gonna start up the RO just by plugging that in and we've got this needle valve all the way open so initially we're just going to have sap coming through at low pressure saturating the filter and the reverse osmosis canister and being discharged here back into our gathering tank it's going to get all the air out of the system here and once that's flowing i will show you how to adjust the needle valve okay so we've got uh, the sap fully coming out of here now 
Okay, we're ready to adjust this needle valve. Now this needle valve is going to increase the pressure of the system, starting to reject the water, the permeate, out of the sap, increasing the sugar concentration. So we've got to tighten this thing almost all the way down. We're, we're typically about a half a turn off of having the valve totally seated to get us to a good pressure point. Okay, there's fully seated. Um, sorry, about a, about a quarter turn from fully seated. Now you can see that the pressure of the system is going up and we're, we're running right around 100 psi right now. And uh, that'll typically stay around 100 to 105 psi. And you'll see down here we've got permeate, pure water, starting to be pushed out of the sap. Let me see if I can get a good view of that. There. Now that flow rate should be about the same as the concentrate flow rate here. Now you can see our concentrate still coming out a little bit higher. So what we may want to do is actually tighten down that valve a little bit more and get those a little bit more balanced. Okay. Um, and then once those have a pretty balanced flow, we will uh, put this into the, uh, a five gallon bucket again and kind of make sure we, we get a good even split. So we've adjusted the needle valve a bit more and our pressure sitting at about 105 PSI now. And you can see that the flow rate of the permeate coming out and the flow rate of the concentrated sap coming out are about even with each other. So these two pails should fill up at about the same speed then, and we'll be able to take our concentrate pail, put it into our evaporator pan, and begin boiling for the day. Okay, that's it. Thanks everyone again for stopping by Sugar Tree.